Hey, John Ray, JDOD.com. We are at the Cloud Computing event in London, and Workday is here. I've got Andy Lieber, Workday. How's it going? Did I get your last name right? We didn't practice that. No, no, it's, it's correct, Andy Lieber. Great, so, excellent. So, why are you here? So, it's our first time at the event. We've, uh, we've taken a booth, and uh, it's predominantly CIOs and technical people here, and uh, we wanted to try and connect with that community, and, and First of all, get the word their name out there, but also we, we bumped in some of our customers and, and see how they're playing and who else they're talking to. Yeah, that was one thing I noticed about the conference, there's definitely a focus on technical infrastructure management, and that's a lot of the audience. Mm -hmm. What What is Workday's message to that audience? So we, we've, we've actually brought one of our uh, technical architects across from Dublin for the day, so we, we've got a slot to present. Uh, and we want to talk a little bit about the changing role of the CIO with, with the advent of cloud. So we, we have a, I think we've got a 20 minute slot where we just want to talk about what we're seeing, um, really how the relationship between the business and the CIO is changing because uh, cloud has come along and, and hasn't disenfranchised the CEO but has changed their role in terms of the selection and deployment of technology. Mm. So you don't see the cloud as a threat to the CIO necessarily? Because I kind of do. So No, it's a good question. Yeah. It's a good question. And we, we um, I mean, there's a couple of big things that they need to think about. One is, obviously how they're serving the business and the speed that they can serve the business. So, you know, a lot of CIOs are coming over saying, hey, I'm being pressed by the business on HR or financials or, or you know, whatever it may be. I can't deploy it fast enough through to, um, listen, I've got multiple interfaces I need to think about, predominantly around payroll, for instance, mm -hmm. and, you know, how, how do I use your technology to, to interface the, to those legacy items? Right. So on a typical workday implementation, what would the CIO's role of your customers be? Um, they're, they're a big part of the selection process, absolutely. So um, you know, when, we, when we talk to organizations, uh, we're talking predominantly to, to the business. So it's the business who come to us and say, listen, something's not working for us. You know, we can't get to countries fast enough. We can't get to users fast enough. The user interface is not what the new workforce is expecting. You know, I was at an event last week, and Someone pointed out that the graduates that are entering the workforce now are, are people who were you know, born into that, basically. So you know, they're coming from their homes and coming in and saying, I want, a, I want a different UI. So I think the days of the CIO being able to dictate to the business and say, I've selected a tool and you will use that, are changing. And the business are coming back and saying, no, 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 you know, this, is, this is what we need. The CIO, though, will obviously bless that and say, how does it fit within my architecture? How does that fit within my, my plans? Um, so you have to get the CIO comfortable, I would imagine, around things like data security and integration and things like that, make sure that they buy into what you're doing there. So, uh, integration for sure, yes, right. we spend a lot of time on that, but the absolute core of our business is security. So I'm seeing a lot more CIOs wanting to look at, uh, you know, not just around um, SSAE 16 and SOC 1, but like 27,000 or more which has come along. So they, they really, really want to drill on, you know, what's happening to my data. Because you, know, you think right. what, what you're handling core data, financial records, people records. Sure. Obviously, you know, where is that going? What are you doing with that? Yeah. Particular about which that. makes me think about regulations, which makes me think about Europe, <laughs> which is well known for certain kinds of regulations that companies have to contend with. And uh, Workday is obviously well known for its uh, North American penetration. But when we debate Workday's potential dominance amongst my colleagues, we say, how are they going to do in Europe? So mm -hmm. how are you doing in Europe? Uh, so, it, 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 hey, I'm bound to say something. Things are going very well. Uh, we, I think um, it's pretty well known, at the start of 2011, uh, we decided that uh, we wanted to make the push into Europe. Uh, that's why I came on board. You know, I've known Dave and Neil and, and Mike for a while. And they came back to me and said, hey, we, we, we're, we're really ready to do this. And if you know anything about Dave and Neil, they didn't want to do this halfway. They said, we're either in or out. So, um, we've made some big investments. I think you know we have data centers in Europe now, so we have Amsterdam and Dublin up and running. Uh, we have a very substantial engineering center in Dublin. Um, you know, I'm talking a lot of people there. Uh, here in London, we've just outgrown our office in Bake Street. We're moving to an office in, in Marble Arch, so we've just taken a, um, a amount of real, real estate there. Customer-wise, uh, last year we didn't do a lot of, of PR. We really didn't want to kind of flag work would make a lot of noise. We just wanted to get on with the hard work of just building the business. And um, I'm pretty fortunate the last couple of weeks I've been speaking with new customers. So 
I was in Amsterdam, uh, Utrecht actually last week, uh, speaking with RBSI, so part of the RBS group now, Direct Line Insurance. Uh, told a fantastic story about they chose as very much around usability. They said, you know, hey, all you people in the crowd are all ticking boxes about does it do this, does it do this, does it do this? And they said, that's not what it's about. A little bit of the Apple mantra, this is about people hands on using it and engaging with the system. Uh, and then just before that, a uh, couple of weeks before that in Brussels, we had uh, Randall, who you probably know they're, like, they're very high end architecture company. So, yeah. Ferrari World down in Abu Dhabi, the tape onto the, the bridge that goes from Copenhagen to Malmo, they, they do projects like that, so very um, high-end consultancy. They presented with us in, in Brussels as well and just told a fantastic story of uh, coming in on time on the budget, which the CEO didn't believe, came down and questioned a lot about it. So um, we've also got uh, Inchcape Shipping coming to help us open the new office when we move in in about, um, about a month's time. And then uh, you probably know uh, Aviva have been great talking about us. So Andy Moffat at Aviva talked with us at HR Tech in Amsterdam last year. Uh, did a great presentation where he said this is this is all about access to data, and he told a great story in saying it used to be like a bowl of spaghetti. You know, I pull a piece of spaghetti and I couldn't get to the end of it, and now it's like lasagna. He's once Italian by the way, so it worked pretty well for him. Now it's like lasagna layers of layers of information. Um, and the other one which we're um, uh, very pleased with um, is Rentacill. So the you know, above 70,000 employees all, all moving to, to work there. Very geographically split, big split between white collar and blue collar workforce as well. Um, so you know, that was a, a, a fantastic win for us. Okay. Well, you got two days to work before, so if you can come up, then we have a good show. Thank you. Thanks. Good to meet you.